Hi everyone. Um, I just want to come on today and um, give you some scriptures on the gate of heaven we're going to talk about. And so we will start in Genesis chapter 28 and we'll, verse 12. And this is about Jacob. He was in Bethel, and he lay down, and he fell asleep, and he had a vision, a dream. So verse 12 says, He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in you, your descendants shall all be families of the earth, be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. So God promised this to the Jews. He is not finished with the Jews. Verse 16, then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and it is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set up a pillar and poured oil on top of it. And he called the place Bethel. Then we'll go down to verse 20. And Jacob made a vow saying, If God, I think that should be God will, not if God, because God already promised him this. He shouldn't say if, because that's doubt. But he did. He said, if God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I take and I will and give me food to eat and garments to wear. Hmm. Sounds like heaven to me. And I return to my father's house. We're going to be in our father's house, the tabernacle in heaven. Amazing. Then the Lord will be my God. This stone, which I have set up as a pillar, will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Now let's go to John chapter 1. And this is amazing because Jesus, when he was talking to Nathaniel, he brought up this very story. But he was speaking to Nathaniel. And we know Nathaniel is a part of the body of Christ, he was one of the disciples. So uh, we'll start in John chapter 1, verse 47 to 51. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know my name? 
Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, you were under the fig tree. Ah, there's that fig tree, and it's always related to Israel. He's an Israelite, and he was under a fig tree. Amazing. Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, you will see the heavens opened, Mm. and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And Nathanael was one of the disciples, so he is part of the church. Hallelujah. Um, Genesis, I'll just give you this scripture and you can read it. But Genesis 35, 14 and 15 um, also, you know, repeat what um, Jacob saw, basically. So let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. This is when Jesus was getting baptized. So after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and light, lightning on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the heavens literally opened up. Wow. And the Spirit came down upon him. Uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Now when all the people were baptized... Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descending, descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came out of heaven. There's that. So heaven opens again. And the Spirit descended. And then there's a voice. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Wow. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass... In the 15th year, 13th year, I'm sorry, 13th year on the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was by the river Chabar among the exiles, the heavens opened and I saw visions of God. Wow. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Verse 56 through 60. Now this is um, about Stephen. 
And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, opened up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes uh, at the feet of the young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. When we go up, we need to be crying out for the people who are going to be left behind. We need to be crying out and saying, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. We need to forgive them. A lot of these people may turn and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord during the tribulation. And we know in the book of Revelation, it talks about multitudes without number that come and make it to heaven being martyred for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we have to remember, no matter how evil these people are, maybe they're Maybe they will have repent and, and change their heart and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We don't know. God's going to work on their hearts. But he's working on our hearts. He's preparing us right now. He wants the fullness of the Gentiles to come in, which actually I believe is maturity. He wants us to to reach, to be completed in him, to reach the purity, to be found blameless, spotless, so that when he comes, he will find faith and we will be pure, blameless, spotless bride. We have to strive for that. I know it's, it's not easy. It is not easy, but we have to strive to be righteous, to be Christ-like. And we have the Holy Spirit to help us do that. Amen. Amen. Now let's read in Revelation chapter 4. There's a lot of good verses in Revelation. Chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. After these things I looked, and behold, a door. That's actually the same as a gate, which is what we read in Genesis, where Jacob saw a gate. A door and gate mean the same. A door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, there's the voice again. So we're, we're going to see heaven open up and we're going to hear the voice. And it's going to say, come up here. A voice which I heard like a sound of a trumpet speaking with me. And I pray it will speak to me as well. And it said, come up here, and I will show you things that must take place after these things. Immediately, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne. That's the same as what Stephen, he saw, Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he, Stephen said before he died, Lord, receive my spirit. So that goes along with verse 2. 
immediately I was in the spirit. I just thought that was pretty cool. That Stefan said, receive my spirit. And we are going to say, we're going to be in the spirit. And we're going to shed our sinful, corruptible body. Amen. And we're going to have our new body incorruptible. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 7, uh, verse 9 through 17. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed, in white robes and palm branches were in their hands and they cry out with a loud voice saying salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb and all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to him, These who are clothed in white robes, who are they? And where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in the temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. Wow. They will no longer, they will hunger no longer, nor thirst any more, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that's that just reminds me that when Stephen cried out, he cried out and said, Lord, do not hold those sins against them. That just amazes me. And that's what we need to do on our way up. We need to say, Lord, don't hold their sins against them and pray that they will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, let's go back to Revelation chapter 4, because I forgot a couple verses there. Because um, I wanted to talk about the 24 elders. Revelation chapter 4, verse 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white garments, and golden crowns on their head. Now at this point, it sounds like the Bema seat has already happened, and we will receive our rewards, which will give us those crowns. I want to get some rewards. Absolutely. And I hope you do too. That's why we have to keep moving forward. We have to stay strong. We don't want to end up losing rewards. We want to gain rewards. Amen. Verse 10. The 24 elders will fall down. That's humility. 
because it's all Christ. We got those crowns be all because of him. Nothing that we did, it's all for, for his glory, not our own. So falling down, that reminds me of the wheat. When the wheat is ready, it bends over because you're, we're in humility. But the tares, they stand straight up. That's pride. Absolutely. So we want to have humility. 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, O Lord, to receive, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. We're going to cast those crowns at his feet because it's because of him that we got them in the first place. That's just beautiful. That's amazing. Let's go to chapter Revelation chapter 5, 8 through 14. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down. There's fallen down again before the lamb, each one holding a harp and, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. For you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. That's us. That's going to be us. You have made them to be kings and priests. So we are going to be kings and priests. But the tribulation saints, if you read later, they will be priests. But here, this group is kings and priests and that's the bride of Christ that's us that's the 24 elders you have made us kings and priests to our God and they will reign on the earth Wow then I looked and I heard a voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders that's us again and the number of them was myriads and myriads, thousands of thousands, same with a loud voice. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on, on the sea and all things in them, I heard them saying. Wow, even the created things, John could hear them. He heard them, the created things, animals, trees, whatever. It's amazing. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. There's that falling down again. The humility. It's all because of Christ. We have to humble ourselves. It's all because of him. Amazing. Revelation chapter 21 and I think that might be the last verse. 21, 1 through 10. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. I saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven. 
coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. Wow. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death, and will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And then he said to me, It is done. Sounds like it is finished. Amen. Jesus on the cross said, It is finished. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the springs of the water of life without cost. Isn't that John chapter 4? The woman at the well? Wow. Jesus said, I, I am have living waters forever to the woman at the well. It's amazing. He who overcomes will inherit these things. And I will be his God and he will be my son. But for the cowardly, now that word reminds me of people who are ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And Paul talks about that in Romans. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. God doesn't want us to be ashamed. When he comes, we need to not be in shame, but we need to be ready for him to meet us. We need to be striving to be like him. Amen. And not be cowardly. Not be ashamed. But for the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now we need to make sure that we don't have any of those behaviors any of those sins in our life. If you do, get rid of it now. This is the month of Elul. It's the time of repentance. It's the time of returning to the Lord Jesus Christ, restoring our relationship with him. This is the time to get rid of the garbage in our life. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to the great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. So the heavens are open, and now it's coming down. Having the glory of God, her brilliance was like very costly stone, as a stone of crystal clear jasper. Verse 12. It had a great and high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names were written on them, which were were the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel. See how important Israel is? God's not done with the Jews and don't ever think that he is. Those are his chosen people. I love the Jews. Yes, they don't believe right now, but they will. God is going to discipline them and they will turn 
and realize that Yeshua is their Messiah. They will believe. That's what the tribulation is for, is to bring salvation to the Jews. That's Romans 11, 25. You know, they are partially blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And once the fullness of us come in, then he's going to go back and deal with the Jews. So that replacement theology is garbage. It's actually demonic. Don't believe it. Don't have anything to do with it. It's actually demonic. Verse 16, the wall of the city had 12 foundation stones. There's the stones again. And on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And they were all Jewish. Every one of them. So the city itself is going to be very Jewish. It's going to have the 12 tribe and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel and also the names of the 12 apostles. Wow. That's actually 24. 12 tribes and 12 apostles, 24. So God's going to have two sets of 24 because we're the elders in chapters four and five and now he talks about them being the 24 as well that's amazing so i just wanted to point that out because one of these days soon the gate the door in heaven is going to open up and he's going to call us up we're going to hear the trumpet as a voice just like he told Jacob and Nathaniel and we're gonna hear that trumpet and it's gonna be soon so let's get ready let's make sure that we are striving to be Christ-like so when he comes we are not ashamed and that we have the garment of righteousness on us. And then when we get up there, we'll get our rewards and we will get white robes. Because it's going to be his righteousness. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. We have no idea how beautiful it's going to be. So we need to stay focused on that. We need to 